By the grace of Jesus Christ, my brethren, let us read now from the Old Testament. From the book of Isaiah the prophet, chapter 39. Isaiah the prophet, chapter 39, verse 1. At that time, Merodach Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he heard that he had been sick and had recovered. And Hezekiah was pleased with them, and showed them the house of his treasures, the silver and gold, the spices and the precious ointment, and all his armory all that was found among his treasures. There was nothing in his house or in all his dominion that Hezekiah did not show them. <coughs> then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and said to him, What did these men say, and from where did they come to you? So Hezekiah said, They came to me from a far country, from Babylon. And he said, What have they seen in your house? So Hezekiah answered, They have seen all that is in my house. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. Then I saw I said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and with your father and what your fathers have accumulated until this day shall be carried to babylon nothing shall be left says the lord and they shall take away some of your sons who were who will descend descend from you whom you will beget and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of babylon so hezekiah said to isaiah the word of the lord which you have spoken is good for he said, At least there will be peace and truth in my days. Amen. Hezekiah is a king concerning whom the word of God through his word testifies that none others of the kings of Judah stood like him. And nor would anyone stand in the way that he did. He was a king that we would say was the best, so that we do not use the word which is not uh, in the will of God, perfect. But he was the best king, who did always what was straightforward before the Lord. He took away the high places of idolatry in the people of Israel. He destroys the, destroyed the statues. He, burnt, he cut off the high places. And he broke the bronze serpent that Moses had built. Because until those days, the sons of Israel burned incense to, that, to, to the serpent. And he called it an abomination. His heart was turned to God and his hope was in God alone. None like him stood after him. But nor was anyone found before him. Why? Because he attached... He clinged himself to the Lord. He never departed from following Him, but he kept all the commandments of the Lord, which the Lord commanded Moses, with the result that the Lord was with him, and wherever he went out, he prospered and had favor from God. This, this is a man which we all want, with things that we all want, God to be with us, and He to go ahead of us in our life. This is what we want for our children. This is what we want for our brothers and sisters. This is what we want for the church of Christ. God to be with us and to give success to the works that we do in accordance to His will, of course. A man, a king, a believer without a flaw. At least in the way that we see things. According to appearance, but as we see as well, 
in accordance to the will of God from his fruit, because you can tell a tree from its fruit. A person in whom God doesn't see something that needs correction. But things are not the way they appear. Hezekiah has something which he doesn't know, nor do we know, but it is something that may happen to all of us without us realizing a thing. So for that reason, God brought a trial of, of illness to him, and he sent Isaiah the prophet to tell him, prepare your household because you are ready to depart. Hezekiah, as every man, loves this life. He wept. And with boldness he stood before God, saying, Lord, you know how I have walked all these years. You know how I stood before you. You know every detail of my life. For that reason, give me an extension for my life. And so God, to such a person who has such a course in Christ, he could do nothing more than listen to him and, and tell him, yes, I will give you an extension of 15 years to your life. He became king when he was 25. 39 years old, he became ill. And he lived another 15 years. Uh, he died when he was 54. But God for Hezekiah and for, and for us, because the Bible is divinely inspired and beneficial unto doctrine, unto teaching and training and admonition, so that we may understand from what we are in danger, from where we are in danger. The Bible says he forsook him so that he may test them, so that he may know all the things that were in his heart, which in the end only God knows, not even man himself. The things that exist in the heart of man, nobody knows them except God, but also the one to whom God reveals these things. For that reason, during that time, that is, after his healing, and because his illness was unto death, unhealable, only God can intervene. Then God stirred up messengers from Babylon, and indeed Merodach Baladan, who was the son of Baladan, the king of Babylon. And they sent letters and presents to Hezekiah, for they heard that he had been sick, a very serious illness, but the Lord healed him, and he had recovered. Now God had withdrawn his grace from Hezekiah, so that his heart may come forth. And to those who come to marvel with wonder for the miracles of God, Hezekiah shows and reveals the things that he keeps within his heart. During that period, we must say that the, Lord, the main enemy of the people of Israel and the great threat for Judah was the Assyrians, but the Babylonians were a very distant people who didn't have close relations. So Hezekiah, the Bible says he rejoiced, he was very glad for their, these messages. And he considered it, he considered that the most important thing that he had to show to those who came with marvel toward him, it wasn't the miracle of God, not the God of the heavens and the earth, but his belongings and his life. And so it appears that the most significant thing that man has is that which he keeps in his heart and if what he keeps in his heart is prevalent then from this 
it depends not his li- it's not only his life that it depends on it but his surroundings his family his future but also eternal life one such person i could say and i don't know if it's the truth whatever he did he did it for his benefit and it's right we draw near to god because we want god to be with us but not only with us we approach god because we love him and we want him to bless us but also everyone else more than us this is the christian this is christ christ then take his sacrifice into account the pain of his soul compared when he looked at the will of god but also before his fruitfulness because we are all fruit of the labor of his soul but hezekiah had another mind frame he was very blessed he was uh, obedient and prosperous in the will of god submissive but the main person in his life was himself so when they came he showed the things that he felt were the blessing of god for him the things that he loved and that's what what does he say here he showed the house of his precious things my precious things he says the gold and the silver the spices and the precious ointment and all his armory all that was his and all that was found among hings his treasures there was nothing in his house or in all his dominion that hezekiah did not show them how deceitful is the heart of man his heart is where his treasure is and his treasure was his belongings but something more himself his treasure was himself his life his success the favor of god for him the presence of god for him the blessing of god for him this in the new testament they call it love of oneself the apostles call this and you know my dear brethren you know how dangerous this thing is and where it may lead man such behavior and such christian mind frame you know where it may lead man so having showed all these things with great boasting and pride and hiding the glory of god for the miracle that he did in his life then god sends isaiah not for hezekiah but for us he sent him to hezekiah and he tells him who are these people why did they come here they came from a far away land why did they come he didn't say but he said what he did for them and he says i show them all my belongings and i saw i was saddened but god rose up from his throne to speak to this man the days are coming when all these things that you showed all these things that your fathers have accumulated until this day will be carried to the ones that you showed all this treasure will leave you because you have these things because god is with you so these things will leave you and they will be taken to babylon 
but also your children, your sons, will be arrested and taken and become eunuchs in the king in the palace of the king of Babylon. And the heart of Zechariah, this terrible heart, says Amen to the word of God. But praise be to God that all these things will happen to my children, to others, and not to me. Isn't it amazing? Praise be to God because I won't live these things. This part of life isn't here only. Our life is eternal. The lack... Tremendous lack of love toward God, toward God's work that reaches even is continuous. The prevalent person is myself. These people are dangerous. A good Christian, a perfect Christian, may become the most dangerous person. I'm not talking about others, so don't look around. But we must look at ourselves, every one of us within himself. Because many times we rejoice that God is good, merciful, compassionate, and by grace He blesses us and it is good what we do. But... We forget that there are other people within our close environment, our family, our children, our grandchildren, our brothers and sisters. And we forget them because we want the blessing for us and it is a good thing, but not only for us. I remember I've said this before, but today I remembered it in a special way. Once my heart was very grieved because of the behavior of a brother. I don't know if he was right or wrong, but what I know is that he had hurt me. And so knowing the Word of God, I said, I have to forgive Him, I have to love Him. And so I began to pray. It was difficult for me to tame my heart. So I said, Lord, bless Him, I love Him, bless Him, I love Him. Days passed by, many days. And at some point in prayer, I felt that truly God had intervened into my heart. I loved Him. And I was praying not with tongue and with word, but with work and with truth for God to bless him a lot. And I was so satisfied, so happy, until there in my joy, giving thanks and saying, Lord, bless him a lot, a lot much more, I heard the voice of the Lord. Should I bless him more than you? And there I was destroyed. I said, no, not more than me. Okay, I love him, I've forgiven him, but don't bless him more than me. It was so difficult for me to accept it. To understand it. So I stood up. Stirred up and, 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 and troubled and, and afraid. I dare say indignant with God even though it isn't the truth. But I was with complaint. And I said, no, not more than me. And today I understood how, how dangerous it is, how treacherous is this thing that, can, that our heart can create in our Christian life. To make us not lovers of ourselves only, but people who, because we care so much about ourselves, we lose every inch, not of love, but also of interest 
for those for which Christ has given us the new tremendous terrifying commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. And to live in the presence of God because God is good. I enjoy the grace of God because God is good. And slowly, slowly, my interest is lost. But not only my interest, also my love. The love for myself increases. Let me bring in my wife as well, or maybe my son and my daughter that I love. Okay, my grandchild, but up to there. But Christ loves all people. And He wants all to come to repentance and to enjoy eternal life. For that reason, His commandment is not hate your enemy or be indifferent for your enemy. His commandment is love your enemy. And if Christ's commandment is love your enemy, what do you think the commandment of Christ is? For your neighbors that are close to you in the New Testament. Even though in the Old Testament He had said, love your neighbor as yourself. Treacherously, He comes in. And if we don't realize this thing quickly, if we don't realize this danger quickly, then very soon we shall come to situations that are uncontrollable. Which means mainly that we are not able to control our own heart. And from this we cannot control our life. And because of this, we are not able to control our future that is to come. But also the most important thing is that all the work of Hezekiah had as a result for God to be with him and, God, and Hezekiah to enjoy the grace of God. But God wanted to show Hezekiah the perfect Hezekiah, the blessed man, the holy person, the glorious person, who was prosperous. He wanted to show him how far he is from the will of God in reality. How far he is. How wrong is his opinion concerning the things of God in his life, but also in whatever he touches with his body, his soul, and his spirit. What a tragic mistake and a painful mistake and dangerous and disastrous without him realizing a thing. But how nice would it have been, my dear brethren, today for us all to say, am I the same way, Lord? Because for me to confess to you, and I won't tell you a lot of things now, but I'm not far. We're not far. Say whatever you want. I'm talking about myself now. I'm not very far from this. I'm not saying that we are blessed like Hezekiah and obedient. No. But I'm saying that our heart is not far from this small path that the heart of Hezekiah took, it may be that we are walking in it. May God have mercy upon us. And especially in these latter days, especially in these days that we have to walk exactly circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise people, for the days are evil. Amen.